This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad, the Mad Canadian Barbecue <laughs> Company is Second week in, in a row. Ohio. Yes, it's an Ohio-based company where you usually say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. With great seasoning such as the S&P Bud, it is a great, great seasoning. Just a very basic salt and pepper blend goes great on many, many, many meats that you may grill. <laughs> also, another great one that we did just last weekend, the Kerry Steak. Yeah, we did. We grilled some fantastic steak brings out the full flavors of it it is a, a little great, bit of worcestershire a little bit of olive oil whole lot of carry steak yes be sure to check out all of those including what jared has shown here one of his favorite the coffee and q uh, be sure to check out all the other great seasonings over at the mad Canadian bbq.com be sure to use the promo code sloopcast10 at checkout for 10 percent off mad Canadian barbecue company where they have your butt covered this episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by Wolf's Ridge Brewing. Wolf's Ridge Brewing is my favorite brewery in the entire city of Columbus, and we've got a few. And not only have we got a few, we've got a few great ones. Um, but but Wolf's Ridge is my favorite in the entire city. They're in my top two in the entire state. They have so many amazing, amazing, amazing. So many amazing seasonal options, but I want to talk real quick about their core lineup. You have the Daybreak, which is a coffee vanilla cream ale. I'm sure it pairs great with the coffee and Q. Uh, the Pack IPA, that's a solid, a uh, little bit more resiny IPA, uh, but it still definitely has like that Citra and that mosaic flavors in it. And then the Heartlandia, which is an easy drinking American style lager. If you are trying to transition someone out of junk beer and into craft beer, the Heartlandia is an amazing step into that world. So all of that and more can be found at wolfsridgebrewing.com. That is wolfsridgebrewing.com. This is where the music goes, except in, except if you're on YouTube, because eventually we'd like to monetize. <laughs> Although we're nowhere near meeting those qualifications yet. Tell 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 your friends, tell your friends to subscribe and and listen on YouTube as well. Of course, we're monetizing over at the we're we're, we're doing this both on the Buckeye Scoop. But we're also uploading to our own personal YouTube channel, so we're doing both. Make sure to subscribe over at our over at our personal one as well. But this is but if you want to listen to the music, you have to listen to the podcast version of the podcast and not the YouTube version of the podcast. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty, pretty well. How are you, Jared? <laughs> I'm going to drink my coffee. <laughs> we had to try that intro twice because I lost it. But you, you guys don't get to hear that. Now, if you're listening to the Discord, you get to hear me completely losing it the first time. <laughs> So those of you listening live, good job. <laughs> uh, Patreon.com slash Sloopcast to join the Discord and listen to us record live and listen to me make a fool of myself. All right, Kyle, we have a lot to get to today. We have some basketball recruiting news, some football recruiting updates, and then we got a bunch of Ask Sloopcast questions. So I think we should waste no time. All right. So let's go ahead and get... The first one out of the way here, basketball. When's the last time we talked about basketball? Well, we're not going to spend too much time on here, though, but uh, it was, it's definitely big news here. Uh, out of St. Vincent, St. Mary. Hmm. hmm. I think we've heard that college, that high school before. Yeah, I, th I think I think they have a good history. I think so. Uh, Maliki Branham. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Malachi. Malachi. 
that works. Thank you. <laughs> it's a good bit. <laughs> yeah, I got to start us off strong here, Jerry. Oh boy, uh, what a sloop cast moment. Um, one of the top shooting guards in the country, uh, the best prospect in the state of Ohio. Uh, he is a four-star, borderline five-star recruit out of Akron, Ohio. A huge get when you can get the, you know, this isn't football. You know, I, I kind of like to talk about basketball and football recruiting and returns of Ohio State and Kentucky, but just reversed. Mm -hmm. If Kentucky, from a football standpoint, if Kentucky can convince their top three players to stay in state and play football, that's a huge win for them. While it's kind of just understood for Ohio State that the top three players, if you want them, are going to come play football at Ohio State. Nope, but this, this is not necessarily the case with basketball. Here's the thing. Like all three of Ohio State's commits all within state here. Yeah. yeah. It's one, three, and four. The number two okay. is uh, Logan, is Logan, who's the uh, big center out of Archbishop in Cincinnati. Is he committed elsewhere? Indiana. Yeah. See, and, that, and that's typically what happens. The best players in Ohio end up playing for Michigan State, Indiana, Kentucky. I think... The best player in Ohio last year went to Pitt, if memory serves, but I, I don't follow basketball recruiting nearly as closely as I follow football recruiting. This is this is huge. Ohio State, of the three of the top four players who are all very good, are staying at in-state, st going to Ohio State. Like, we, we've all been, I think, for the most part... Uh, very happy with the with the direction of Ohio State basketball right now. We obviously didn't get a postseason last season, so we don't necessarily know how that was how that would have turned out. Um, I don't think there was a lot of hope that Holtman and crew were going to go past. I don't think there's a lot of hope that they were going to what even get out of the first weekend. Like, it yeah. would have been pretty great if Ohio State had made it out of the first weekend. Because of what he inherited, because of, you know, the recruiting class just before he got there falling apart, we have had some really low expectations for Holtman, and he's always succeeded in, in passing that. But now it's sort of to the point where we're now waiting for the program to take that next step. I think... This is the type of guy who can take Sweet 16 program and maybe push it into an Elite Eight, dare I say, further type program. I'm not saying I'm not saying national title. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to go that far. But if you're trying to sort of take that next step, and if you're trying to potentially become like the best. Big Ten team, if you're trying to at least compete for being the next, you know, best Big Ten team, uh, this is the guy who can sort of, because basketball, it's it's a lot more about an individual player than, than football. Malachi, I think, maybe could take Ohio State up that next level. Yep. It's one thing that Ohio State really need is that someone who can really be able to shoot those threes have some sort of um make everybody aware that there is a danger for someone shooting the three i mean we've Ohio State's ha always had like big guys and really emphasize that hey we got a strong big guy big uh forward or center that we can really punish you underneath but really haven't had a good shooting guard in a while uh yeah not not like a next level correct shooting guard yes a guy who's nearly a five-star recruit yep correct all right kyle let's talk some football recruiting now one the obvious big piece of news is jordan hancock um last week's episode which we had recorded i think on wednesday night is that correct kyle it doesn't it doesn't matter but we recorded that one really far ahead of time 
because we were experimenting with the video and Kyle and I were both busy over the weekend. And the one piece of like news news that we had on that show was that Jordan Hancock had decommitted from Clemson. And we told you on that episode that there was a decent chance that by the time that episode was actually released, that he would end up committing to Ohio State. And, you know, he made us, he made us sweat it. He waited all the way to Sunday. Like, I think I had, I think I had posted the episodes before he committed. But by the time the episodes actually came out, we, we did in fact have a commitment from Jordan Hancock. And pushing Ohio State one step further to a potentially historic recruiting class. Don't count your eggs yet here, because Alabama is catching up in a hurry right now. I was telling oh. you guys, we, what we were talking, I, it's been a couple, maybe a few months ago. Oh, because we do this every year. If you don't, maybe if you're new to following recruiting, we do this every year. Oh, is... Is Alabama finally losing their steam on the recruiting trail? Because back in March or April or whatever, they were down in the 50s, if memory serves, mm -hmm. national recruiting rankings. And I'm just sitting back like, they'll finish top five. Oh, but everyone, mm -hmm. North Carolina and Clemson and, of course, Ohio State and, oh, and, and LSU. And uh, now like, no, they'll finish top five. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry yeah. about Alabama. Yeah. Want to update on UNC and Clemson? I know Clemson, I, I think they're still in the top 10, but it's getting close. Barely. They're ninth right now. And then UNC is seventh. So all those we talked about a couple months ago is like, oh, look at all these Big Ten teams and where they're ranked. And Rutgers, look how high they're at. Yeah. Let me, <laughs> let me just give you an update where they're at, though. Big Ten-wise, Ohio State, Number one, still easily, they, they are now over the 300-point mark in the 2021 rankings on 24-7 sports. Michigan is eighth. Scrolling down. 15th <laughs> is Wisconsin now. Scrolling down. Down. Iowa and Maryland, 17 and 18. The Gophers, Jared's Gophers at 22. <laughs> And stayed at 25. Wow. I had thought maybe I just didn't hear. I, I This is me being completely honest with you, Kyle, because I switched some screens over here on, on, on the big monitor. I was like, did I just not hear him say Penn State? I'm like, maybe I was. Did he miss Penn State? Did I just not hear him say Penn? Are you, they're all the way down in. Did you say 25? 25. They have 13 commits right now. They have six four stars and seven three stars. And then way down at 30th, still in the top 30, is your Scarlet Knights. You know, and by right, you don't. With 21 commits. Yeah, I'm sure like by average that Penn State's probably way ahead of Rutgers, but and I don't follow <laughs> Penn State recruiting closely i really only follow it as it pertains to ohio state maybe this is just going to be a small class for them I, i'm not sure okay kyle so I one saw, of I saw a few articles though that mainly over at espn though so take it for what that is though their recruiting rankings are worthless they are well no it's more of a, a somebody coming out and saying oh alabama has a really good shot at surpassing at Ohio State the way that they're going. And I'm just sitting here, I'm like, yeah, n not if JT and Emeka commit. We'll talk about no that. Way. Yeah, there's no way Alabama could surpass Ohio State. You, you're going to add, you're going to have three top 10 players in one school? Maybe. I mean, I, I'm just going to say I don't know. And I'm going to say I don't know because ESPN's recruiting rankings are stupid and garbage and no one takes them seriously. So maybe depending upon how ESPN has their stuff ranked. Maybe. I don't know. I, mean, I, just, I have no idea because I have no idea how they have their stuff ranked. That's just me pleading ignorance 
of <laughs> anything that ESPN has to say about recruiting. Which you should listen, though, is the Sloopcast most likely to sign. Yes. We have we have updated our top six now because we think that Ohio State will be about that 25 range yeah. in terms of commits here. So with Ohio State having 19 commits right now, yep. look at our latest top six most likely to sign at Ohio State. I decided to keep it a top six. I think we were aiming at 24 before, but I'm going to go ahead and I just decided not to take a slot away when when Hancock committed. Okay. Well, and I think also, no, I take that back. It's because I hadn't updated the top six in a while and Ohio State had a decommitment. So we just kind of traded a corner for a corner. So that's why we're still the top six, despite Hancock committing. So we're still targeting 25. Fair enough. All right. I believe if I'm looking at the top list here, top two haven't changed here. We have Emeka and JT, both solid one and two. Well, but jtt is still number two but my confidence score on him has dropped i think oregon's a real player here and don't don't i mean he's still number two i have a confidence score of 75 next to his name um but he was like at 90 so you know you go from like a 90 percent chance down to a 75 percent chance Still way over 50, yeah. so it's still way more likely than not, but it's we've still lost some points per me. <laughs> since we haven't looked at these in a while, I don't think anything's changed since last I looked at the crystal balls over at 24-7. The latest one coming out in June 10th in favor of Ohio State. So I don't think really anything's changed here. So what kind of, what's really made you lower your percentage of confidence for him though? Uh, there's just smoke. I mean, that's basically it. There, It's just, it's rumor. Uh, JTT doesn't publicize his, his recruitment a lot. So it's a lot of hearsay it, and it's just sort of, it went from, yeah, he's going to Ohio State. He's going to Ohio State. He's going to Ohio State. And now there's just a little bit of, but Oregon. And I would feel better if I knew, knew that Ohio State was going to get him back on campus sometime between now and the first recruiting period. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually not even sure if JTT in, is dead set on on committing during the early recruiting day. But if visits open back up, and that's a big if, then Ohio State's going to be fine. But if if he continues to be physically separated from the university and not able to visit there's going to just sort of be this natural feeling of wanting to stay close to home because recruiting is about comfort. And, you know, he's been to Ohio state, so it's not like he's never been to Ohio state, but it's, it's been a while. And like one more trip to Columbus would probably seal this, mm -hmm. but we just don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, but just and real Anything? quick on a Mecca Buka, I just, there's also some stuff out there, but I don't believe any of it. There's, there's conversation about him in Oklahoma. And if it were to be anyone else other than Ohio State, it probably would be Oklahoma, but I'm just not sweating it. All right. Moving on here. Number three here, staying in at number three, we have Taiwan Malone, the defensive tackle out of New Jersey. Uh, from what we've seen here, there's still zero crystal balls yeah. for him. He's kind of another one of those uh, JT where doesn't really say anything. It's just all kind of just it's, quiet. Oh, it's it's to the next level. It's that to the extreme. He is completely tight-lipped. Um, there's just near no indication of 
from him what he wants or what he's thinking. Um, there's Ohio State ties around him. So that makes you feel good. Um, I, I'm giving Ohio State the edge here, but the confidence score is at like 55%. So take that with what you will. It's more likely than not, but I'm, I'm not betting any high amount of money on it, but I feel I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Moving on here, moving up a spot from five to four here is Jagger Barton, the really talented guard out of Kentucky. I believe last we spoke of him. It was a very tough battle between Ohio State and Kentucky here. And when you're looking at the crystal balls, kind of leads that way too. Uh, the lead expert, Steve Wiltfong, as Ohio State. Yes. With the confidence of a one. Yeah. <laughs> it's Jagger Burton, but that's my fault because I misspelled it in the notes. So I just want to, I want to correct that, but I also want to let everyone know that it was my fault and not Kyle's fault. Yep. Staring at you, Jared. Oh, yeah. The YouTubers know that. That's a deadly stare. All right. We, we, we need to anyway. keep going for the audio folk. Yes. Uh, so you have him here as a 45% confidence here. Yeah. Why isn't it 51%? <laughs> Man, those six percentage points make a huge difference, don't they? Reserving a bit of it for Alabama. Just a tiny little slice. Alabama's involved here. Uh, so if you want to say, why is it 45 and not, say, 50, reserving a little bit for Alabama. Um, if he, he recently, within the past few weeks, pushed back his recruiting day, uh, his announcement day, he was going to announce. And had he stuck with that announcement day, he was going to Kentucky. That is, was great news for Ohio State. So... Jagger Burton, I think, you know, if we were to do like a pie chart, it would be like 45% Ohio State, like 45, 40% Kentucky, and whatever the remainder is to Alabama. Let me ask you this, Jared, because one the one position that Ohio State has really struggled with this recruiting class, if you can even say a struggle, is the offensive line. Yeah. Ohio State has two offensive guards here, so if they so happen to get Edgar as a third offensive guard, do you see any of these three potentially moving over to tackle, whether it would be Jagger or Ben Chrisman or Donovan Jackson? Could you see any of those potentially moving over to tackle? Chrisman plays tackle in high school. There's conversation about where he'll be at the next level. So, is is the Chrisman very well could be a tackle? Yes. Like I said, there's very little to really poke at for this recruiting class. But if you were to, it, I think the line, the the offensive linemen, something you could really. It would. On. It would hurt to miss on Burton. And Ohio State really needs a true offensive tackle in this class, uh, and and we'll get we'll get down to that. Unfortunately, at the bottom of this list. All right, all right. Moving on here, then, Jared. Uh, up and down from four to five here, we have defensive back Derek Davis Jr. out of Pennsylvania. So I think we can probably understand why he dropped here with uh with some of the recruiting movements over the past week week and a half here but just a little bit here about why you did why you in particular jared dropped him it was i think dropping him i think was maybe more of a increasing of burton than it was a dropping of davis does that make sense that was more how, me moving Burton up. How much of it, too, 
is the commitment of Hancock to? Uh, not at all, because Hancock is a dedicated corner and Davis is a dedicated safety. So I, okay. there are several players in this class who might be corners, might be safeties, might be linebackers. There's a lot of defensive backs in this class who might be this or might be that. Hancock is a corner. Davis is a safety. So I, well, I don't. And here, here's something else. Here's something else though too, and might be going along with what you just said too. Ohio State already has three safeties or they're labeled as safeties in this recruiting class. Right. Uh, Jalen Johnston, Jensen Dunn, and Andre Turntine. Yeah, and the first name you mentioned. Jalen Johnson out of LaSalle. Is a linebacker. I, I know I know it says safety. He very well might end up playing safety. It, it'll probably end up being like the bullet hybrid, whatever situation, but I see him more as, or just as much as a, a linebacker as I do a safety. And again, a lot of these defensive backs in this class, I, I just, I see as, as defensive backs. You have him here as, um, Derek Davis has a 40% confidence. Yeah, I, I still favor Penn State here. Um, the crystal balls are out of whack, in my opinion. The crystal balls are completely Penn State. But I don't think it's that certain. Ohio State is absolutely still a player here. Don't let the crystal balls scare you too much. But I do think it's... As, as Kyle said, it's a 40%. So it's like 40% Ohio State and 60% Penn State. Last one here you have in our top six, on that number six, is one of the best offensive tackles as we were getting to tackles. Is Tristan Lay out of Virginia. He's Lee. been one that's... Lee, thank you. Tristan yep. Lee is one that's... So interesting here because when you look at the crystal balls, it's it's a mix of everywhere. It, I don't think anybody really knows where the, he's going to go. Crystal balls are junk on this. Okay, the crystal balls are complete junk on this. We actually he actually did this week release a top five, which okay that doesn't necessarily clear up that situation. So who do you, who did he have on his top five? LSU, Ohio State, Oklahoma, Clemson, Alabama. So just like the five best teams in the country. <laughs> yeah. From the from the predictions here, that eliminates Penn State then. I yeah, I no. No no Penn State. Um I think Clemson's leading in the crystal balls, is that correct? I believe because, so from yeah. what we saw. Yeah, no. He's not I'm not, I'm not going to say no. I'm not going to say absolutely no way. But LSU is the leader here. LSU is the team to beat. Ohio State right now is fighting for second. And I think that they're winning second place. But of course, second place means nothing. And just want to apologize to our YouTubers real quick. Um... We are working on how to do screen recording. And so the video is going to cut in and out. That, that's just me apologizing. That's just, that's reality. And I'm sorry. All right. Um, we're, we're still figuring out how to do the software. I was using OBS before, but my computer just couldn't handle it. If you saw our first video and you saw how choppy it was, that's why. So that's why we're just doing kind of a straight video today. But apparently this trial version cuts out every 10 minutes. <laughs> so um, the video is going to cut in and out as I notice the video stops recording. Sorry. We're, we're trying to figure it out, okay? Anyway, uh, Tristan Lee. LSU is... You have him as, you have him as a 
thirty percent. What do I have, Matt? Confidence. Thirty percent. Yeah, and that's honestly maybe even a little generous. Uh, <laughs> it's maybe more like a twenty-five or twenty. Uh, LSU is a heavy lean right now, but there's a lot of time. And if Ohio State can get them on campus, and that's a big if, you know, if Ohio State can get them on campus. If Ohio State can get him on campus, this will go great. It'll increase Ohio's Ohio State's likelihood of getting him on campus to like 50%. Last one you have on here, Jared, dropping out of the top six is... Offensive tackle Rayshon Benny out of Michigan. This was just me favoring Lee a little bit more right now. Um, uh, Benny released the top eight. Ohio State was not in the top eight. But Ohio State could still make up ground here if they really decided they wanted to. But they're kind of all in on Lee right now. There's, there's still a long way to go in this recruitment process. There's still some in-state offensive linemen that I think Ohio State are interested in. Um, most most specifically, Terrence Rankle uh, from Maslin, Ohio. He's currently committed to Pitt. I don't think that's a huge deal. So we'll we'll see. As far as as far as that goes, there's some in-state offensive linemen Ohio State are still interested in if if Lee misses, but Ohio State needs a dedicated offensive tackle in this class, and they really needed a like a few studs, and they're not. Yeah, it's it's not it's not the offensive line recruiting class is not hitting the way it needed to hit this year. If they don't get Lee, if they don't get Burton, if they get Lee and Burton, everything's fine. But Lee, they're just trying to play catch up on, and it's just not ideal. And you look at Rayshon the past two weeks here, all the crystal balls have been going to Michigan too. So it might be too late for Rayshon at this point. We'll see. Early ish in this. I mean, we're. It feels late in the recruiting process because so many kids are committing. You know, we're we're way ahead of schedule as far as kids committing. There'll be lots of flips and decommitments, and we've talked about all that before. All right, Jared, anything else on your your top six? Let's do some ad reads. Cool. Uh, first off, we'd like to thank Wolf's Ridge Brewing for sponsoring today's episode. Wolf's Ridge Brewing, the best brewery in the entire city of Columbus. Kyle, uh, you, you came and had a visit this weekend. So despite, yeah, despite your, your North Carolina happenings, your, your existence in North Carolina, you got to come up and, and have some Wolf's Ridge beer. Uh, which ones, which ones you have, which ones did you like? No, I, I remember you. I know for a fact you had the High Banks. I know for a fact you had the Pack IPA. I think you had a maybe a, a couple or a few others. Which ones did you like? I think the the High Bank was probably my favorite, and then coming in close was the Pack IPA. I I'm an IPA guy, obviously, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those two definitely I definitely would recommend. They're really good. Uh, had them with some some great uh, grilling activities that we did over the weekend. <laughs> grilling activities. And, yeah, both of those I would highly, highly recommend. The Peck IPA is it's just an overall great, just all around IPA. So I would probably would recommend that one probably more so to people though. But my my favorite though is probably the High Bank though. The High Banks is really, really good. Uh, you can find the High Banks. You can find a lot of other IPAs. If you're if you're like Kyle and you're an IPA drinker, uh, they've really turned up the dial on the number of IPAs they have. And you can find all of those and more uh, at wolfsridgebrewing.com. They are now delivering to every major market in the state of Ohio. And like I said, if you, you can go over there and you can, you can plug your zip code in and you can see if they deliver to your area. And like I said, you can find all of that at wolfsridgebrewing.com, wolfsridgebrewing.com. 
I'd also like to thank the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company for sponsoring today's episode as well. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company has been a sponsor for many, many months now, and we're so happy and thrilled to have them continue to support Erd and I at the Sloopcast here. Mad Canadian here, uh, we'll just mention some of the other great seasonings uh, that he has to offer, including what Jared's holding up now, which is the Brits Blend. Um, it's just a great, great overall uh, seasoning to put on your chicken, on your on your steak. It's just a it's a great overall seasoning. Uh, some of my other favorites that I've used on wings. So if you're a wing type of person, uh, the Four isn't? Horsemen, great. No, I'm just saying, who isn't a? Okay, I'm sorry, you talk. <laughs> <laughs> the four, <laughs> the four horsemen. It's a great spicy. So those who like those spicy type of wings, definitely recommend that one. Or the Sonoran Heat, if you don't want as much of a kick. Uh, if you want just a good old uh, smoked flavor. Well, just go with the smoked. <laughs> the smoked is another great seasoning as well, too. Uh, find this in, what are they up to? 13 still? 3, 6, 9, 12, 14. Check out all 14 seasonings over at themadcanadianbbq.com. That is themadcanadianbbq.com. Be sure to use the promo code SLUCAST10. Check out for 10% off. All right, Kyle. Uh, we have a bunch i would say a metric crap ton of ask sloopcast questions so let's uh let's pick out the good ones <laughs> and let, let's let's ride these home all right sun card asks what is the highest rated class and can the bucks capture that title in 21 what's the highest rated class uh, the the one they're working on will almost definitely be the highest ranked class in Ohio State history. And of course, when we say history, we're talking about the modern internet recruiting era, which only goes back to about the year 2000. The past 20 years. In history. It sounds much better yeah. that way. Yeah. It does, yeah. But to kind of round out the top five, which I don't think we covered, though... Ohio State one, Alabama two, Oregon three, Tennessee with four, or at four, excuse me, and LSU at five. Oh, crap, the recording stopped again. It's all <laughs> it's almost like that North Carolina stuff. Like, oh, North Carolina is the number two recruiting class. Eh. If you say so. Like, I think we all knew it wasn't gonna last, right? Mm -hmm. still, nope. They'll still have a good class still i mean they're they're at seventh right now yeah and they're doing great for north carolina um of course if uh they have uh grimes i couldn't think of his name for a second if grimes is he still counted in that class because there's talk about him reclassifying to the 2020 class and of course if grimes is not counting towards their class that's obviously going to hurt it because he'll then count towards last year's class but they also didn't have I grimes not, up until a couple weeks ago so i do not see him there okay so maybe 24 7 has uh reclassified him to 2020 possibly okay uh can the bucks capture that title in 21 Yes, they're going to capture the national recruiting title for the 2021 class. Absolutely. Yeah, if they if they nail down getting JT and Emeka, yes. You 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 put that stamp on right then and there. Yeah. Ross State gets those two. Which they're they're still in great position for. Emeka mm -hmm. is Basically, I, I, I feel like that could happen at any time. I feel like his commitment's imminent. That being said, I've I've felt that way for a month. So, mm -hmm. but, uh, and like Ohio I said, State. even with even with some lost momentum with JTT, I still feel great about that. 
And how state still has the best average per recruit. Yeah. Of anybody too. So exactly. It's not just like they had a bunch of guys commit early. That's, and that's why they're so high up. That's not the case. Next question here. Who is your most hated ESPN reporter? And also who is the nation's sports reporter you dislike the most? So who do you that's coming hate from the most? Raleigh, by the way. It's most from Raleigh. Who do you hate from ESPN as a reporter? And then who do you dislike the most as a national sports reporter? Are we talking currently? I really don't know who's at ESPN anymore because I don't really watch them or listen to them. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel I, about that. I mean, Desmond Howard comes to mind. Yeah. He's such a homer. That seems like the, seems like the obvious one. Yeah, that's why I said it. <laughs> um, outside <laughs> of live sports coverage, I don't, I just don't watch a lot of ESPN anymore. Um, it doesn't make sense. I don't listen to ESPN radio, especially not the national guys. I don't listen to that anymore. It's like, why? And I'm preaching to the choir here, but like, why listen to national stuff? All those commercials. I mean, I know we, we do ad reads on this show. I know that, but Compare that to the average amount of time you listen to ads, like listening to the radio. It We barely have any advertising compared to like regular radio. We have basically none. I mean, realistically, we almost have none. And why? And then listen to Greenberg talk about the Jets for 20 minutes? I don't care. Why would I do that? I, there's so many great podcasts that only talk about the thing that I specifically want to listen to. If you guys aren't listening to the Scoop World Order and all of the amazing interviews he's uh, Kirk Barton's having over on the Scoop World Order right now, the hell are you doing? I'm I'm partially saying that because we're a part of the Buckeye Scoop family, but also it's great, <laughs> like. I don't know if I'd go out of my way to talk about it if, if it wasn't, but that does not change the fact that it's absolutely great. You know, the Buckeye Weekly, we've been rolling with Tom and Tony for a while now. Tom has 15 minutes of just the latest Buckeye stuff every morning on the on the morning scoop. Why? Why? Why would I listen to, like I said, Mike Greenberg talk about the Jets for a half hour and of that half hour, 10 minutes of its commercials. I, I went off on a rant there. What, a, <laughs> what about national? Who do you dislike the most in national sports? I I don't know. I, I don't spend a lot of time. I, I, I hate everything at Barstool. I think that they're okay. basically yeah. like the Logan and Jake Paul of of sports media. And if you don't know who Logan or Jake Paul are congratulations keep it that way <laughs> but like that's yeah, I, what barstool is if the paul brothers did sports media it would be barstool yeah i i 100 percent agree appears. with you it's it's definitely anybody over the barstool like it's just it's it's just terrible over there and i i go out of my way to not see them in what I, they have to post. I literally have the term barstool muted in my Twitter timeline. Everyone. All right. Moving on. Meet here. Apollo. Moving on here. Yes. Hi, Apollo. Uh, moving on here. We have Duncan from the discord, which is what he named himself now on our discord. <laughs> Would you change your all decade list? If you only consider performances in the game, you'd have to, right? If you, yeah, you definitely would have to, yeah. Um, I, I don't necessarily want to put a ton of thought into exactly how. Um, yeah. But it definitely would, you know, you have a smaller sample size. You definitely would, I think it cements Dwayne Haskins because he played in two of those games despite only playing one season and played a real pivotal role. 
uh, in his first game, even though he didn't start. So that would solidify Dwayne Haskins if you didn't already have Dwayne Haskins, I think. But yeah, I, yeah, I'm sure it would have to change it. Yep, absolutely. Brawley asks, what is the best cheap bottom dollar beer? Bottom dollar. So we're talking hyper cheap. Uh, this is where... This is the only beer take Tony Gurdon, Tony Gurdon and I agree on. It's Miller High Life. It's only a little bit more expensive than Natty, but a lot better. Mm-hmm. So if I had to buy like 36 of something and give it to a bunch of people who don't care about what beer they're drinking, it'd probably be Miller High Life. Next, next up, if we're going to spend just a little bit more and we're getting into like the the pretty good beers, uh, then I'd go Yingling. I'd that, probably I'd probably go with Yingling, but that even then that might be a little that might not be a deep bottom dollar beer. Though. No, 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 no. When you're talking about bottom dollar beers, you're talking about Miller High Life, Bush, Natty, um. Oh, what's the I'm one t- that they drink in Pennsylvania? Ice, icy light. Oh god. <laughs> um, Rolling Rock. Uh, no, Rolling Rock is more in that next, that next one up with like Yingling. All right. Well, if Yingling's in this list, then I go with Yingling. But that's in the next tier up. You need that bottom one. <laughs> Yingling's in like the same uh, class as like Bud Light, Miller Light, like financially. Apollo, what are you doing, buddy? I'd probably go with I'd probably go with a Budweiser then. Again, that's let's that's in the same t- you're you're now you want to go with Bush? <laughs> Bush. I think you okay. Bush. We'll go with Bush then. Okay. That, that's 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 the popular beer in my county. So uh, <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Uh, Brawley also asks, do you think if Jackson Carmen were completely honest about his recruitment, that he w- that he could claim that Dabo slash Clemson didn't negatively recruit OSU at all? You know, it, a lot of this just depends upon how do you classify negative recruiting? It happens everywhere. That just depends that... on what, what you were saying, though. How do you define that? Or is there like a next level of really going out of your way to negative re- recruit a particular university or coach. Let me put it to you like this. If Alabama went to JC Latham and they said, here is our history, our recent history, our track record of putting offensive tackles into the first round of the NFL draft. And here is Ohio State's track record of doing that. And they stack those up and Alabama's looks better. Is that negative recruiting? No. I agree with you. That's not negative recruiting. That is a a statement of fact. It's not cherry picked data because it's you're an offensive tackle. Here's a track record of offensive tackles going into the NFL. That's not negative recruiting. Now, if you went and you said to, you know, if you if you, you said to anyone, doesn't matter, like they were doing to uh, Thad Mata, people were negative recruiting on Thad Mata hard. Uh, is basically talking about his health. Uh, I, there's at least one recruit who was told that Thad Mata was dying. Um, that's negative recruiting in my mind. So I think when you say negative recruiting happens everywhere, I think a lot of that just depends upon how you define negative recruiting. Because if you're just comparing and contrasting, that's not negative recruiting in my mind. Do you think Jackson Carmen was completely honest? I, again, I think that just dep- I, that just depends upon how do you define negative recruiting. All right, Duncan has another question for us, Jared. You thought about opening the Discord for one game day as a teaser to get more people paying in. 
it might get us closer to Friday episode. <laughs> um, I don't know how I would do that. I'm sure it's possible. I, 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 I'm sure a lot of people do a lot of things with Discord that I'm not aware of. Uh, we're actually recording, or not recording, we're doing this communication over Discord for the first time. We've always used Zoom prior to this, but it was just a little bit easier to group, 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 round up, whatever, uh, the, allow our Discord people to listen in live, doing it through here, just doing it directly through here, so. Um, the audio I don't think has been quite as good as Zoom. I think Kyle's cut out a few times. I'm not exactly happy about that. So we'll see how this happens moving forward. Uh, we're experimenting with all the video stuff. So we're, we're sort of an, ex you know, it's July. Uh, it's a good time to experiment with stuff. And that's what we're doing. So we'll see. Austin Formation asks us, Jared. Is Atlanta the worst city to drive through? If not, where? Atlanta's bad. Um, I haven't been to Atlanta in a while, but it's bad. Uh, Chicago's bad. I've heard horror stories about Boston, but I've not done it personally. Pittsburgh's bad. People in Columbus who have only ever driven for any amount of time in Columbus, and by that I mean like big city, because big city driving's one thing, small town driving's another. Columbus drivers are great. Anyone who says otherwise hasn't driven in Pittsburgh, hasn't driven in Atlanta, Chicago, or Kyle even says all the time how much better the drivers are in Columbus as opposed to the Raleigh-Durham area. Kyle... Yes. And, I, and I will tell you, like, the infrastructure, at least how roads are laid out in Columbus is so so much better than here in the triangle area and what do you always say about ohio drivers compared to i think you just generally say southern drivers use their turn signals we actually <laughs> use turn use signals their... in ohio i think it's that midwest yes. politeness <laughs> excuse me sir i'm coming over so much for southern hospitality right <laughs> uh don't get me started next question here jared there are three scenarios. This is from Suncard. There are three scenarios for the Michigan game that you think are great, acceptable, and absolutely terrible. Acceptable is that we win, mm -hmm. even if it's by a point. <laughs> even if it's by great, a point, he said. I'm, I'm really not happy with how the Discord is doing audio-wise. I said acceptable. Yes, 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 yes. Great is that we just absolutely smothered them. Yeah. And that Harbaugh still keeps his job. That's yeah, that's a, that's a great caveat. Absolutely terrible is any defeat. I see. I would say absolutely terrible is uh, just if the game doesn't happen, which is a, a thing we're facing this year as a possibility. I, I don't think it's pot. I don't I don't I'm almost positive i'm like 90 percent positive ohio state will play michigan this year <laughs> it's gonna it feel really good that it's gonna happen uh all the other stuff in the world considered i still feel like it's gonna happen and i don't put the okay. loss is absolutely terrible simply because i refuse to acknowledge it as a as a scenario it's just it's not it's not it's not a possibility i'm taken Going to try to move through these a little bit quicker here. Uh, Suncard asks another question. Who is most likely to ask one of those questions with the answer at the end? And why is it Austin formation? That's just a dig at Austin. That's all and that Austin is. Formation, and then Austin formation asks, what is, what even is a sun card? I think it has to do with tarot. Sun cards into that uh, mystic stuff. I hope that's the correct word. I Is Mystic okay, Sun Card? We'll see. Find out. <laughs> Austin Formation asks, what is the longest road trip you've ever taken? Uh, Me. The fam uh, didn't, I was the family. I, I know uh, dad and siblings road tripped to Orlando. So that's probably the longest road trip. 
take you a little bit longer. I had my family, this was back in 2000, went all the way from Northwest Ohio, driving through Tampa, all the way down to the Keys. Yeah, that that doesn't sound great. <laughs> <laughs> that was my longest road trip. Now, no, I have um, someone I work with does off-road racing and he takes his Jeep, off-road Jeep, goes all the way over to Arizona once a year. So he does he does that kind of trip every year. That's that sounds terrible. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, moving on here. Suncard asks, "Does the state you live in help pre- predict the places you will vacation? For example, East Coast people love Miami and Puerto Rico. Do Midwest people maybe go to Texas?" I'll tell you. I'll tell you one thing. Ohioans want to go the coast ohio is like yeah myrtle beach probably yeah yeah. (laughs) ohioans love going to myrtle beach that's that's a statement of fact so yes (laughs) so here in north carolina it's want to go to the beach or do you want to go to the mountains so have those two options here got the smokies and blue ridge mountains or you can go to the beach, which there's a number of beach places, whether you go to the Outer Banks or Wilmington or any of the other beaches in between there. Uh, one last question from, well, not last question, but the next one from Sound Card. Would you rather be a season ticket holder or have the best tailgate? I think tailgate. I am a creature of comfort. I don't like big crowds. Um I've seen some tailgates where people have a bunch of TVs up. Um, Cause I want to be able to watch a bunch of games. Uh, I think I'd, I think I'd go tailgate. I want to have a bunch I, of I TVs kinda, up with a bunch of games on. I kind of like that as much as an enjoyable it is to be in an Ohio state game in the horseshoe at Ohio stadium, just being able to watch and see different games going on too. It's, kind of relaxing too so you kind of you kind of in the loop of everything going on i'm i'm a guy that i love to multitask it's both a good and a bad thing but being able to have my main focus on ohio state but being able to see stuff that's going on all the games going on too is something that i enjoy doing <laughs> brawley asks what is what is a hobby that jared and kyle have that isn't beer or live music I don't, know if we, I don't know if we agree too much on live music. No, but... Kyle Kyle doesn't do live music much, but definitely beer, definitely football. Yes. <laughs> uh, video games. It's not a thing we necessarily mm-hmm. talk about a ton on this channel, but we, we both like our video games. What other hobbies? Other hobbies? If anybody's listened to us for extended period of time, everybody knows that Jerry and I are geeks. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> IT. Yeah. Uh, just computer stuff. I, I'm a. I'm a, not. I don't just make a podcast. Um, I listen to a lot of podcasts. If you're ever looking for podcast recommendations, hit me up. Um, I I listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to a lot of books. Reader in quotation marks because it's it's almost always, you know, audible instead of an actual, instead of an actual Listener. book. What's that? listener yeah um i kind of i'm kind of getting into twitch a little bit just yeah. into that and watching that just there's a wide variety of things it doesn't have to necessarily be video games you can right. listen to people talk and all that too so yeah it's tw- twitch is more than video games it has that's its it's probably its biggest thing especially in terms of popularity but twitch is a lot more than video games um, all right, next one here we have who's most likely to win a Discord beer pong tournament, and why Kyle. is it not Austin for me? It's Kyle. He's just good at all of those things. It's it's that's actually pretty <laughs> annoying. <laughs> Kyle could have never played a thing in his life, and then by the third or fourth game, he's really good at it, and it pisses me off. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't thank really. You? <laughs> it doesn't really <laughs> piss me off. 
except when I'm the one losing. Now, if we're on the same team, great. <laughs> All right. Um, another question. What do you think you... What do you think will be the rotation for the secondary and what guys will play? Oh, so we got a, we got to have a football question. Oh, here. thank God. A football question. Yes. Oh, hold on. Let me just enjoy this for a second. Um, <laughs> rotation. It's first off, it's Sean Wade. And then I think seven banks gets the majority of the snaps on the outside, but without spring football, it, it's really hard to say. That's going to be a great position battle to watch. Um, but I'm going to go seven banks. Wade is on there almost all the time. Yeah. Should be on there all the time. <laughs> I mean, we'll see as far as trying to keep him fresh and all of that. Like we have from on Twitter, we have at Z spike 68. Uh, Eric asks us, so assuming that we have fall football, mm -hmm. little to no fans in the stands. Are you guys pro fake crowd noise traditionalists preferring the natural sounds of a practice slash scrimmage setting? That's a great question. Um, I've, I've seen people doing fake crowd noise and it, some, some do it well, some do it really well and some are just terrible, terrible. Yeah. I think it's almost more of, it needs to be subtle. I've seen fake crowd noise done well, and I've seen it done, or I guess heard it done poorly. I, I feel, I think the MLS has used some fake crowd noise, and I thought it's it's just sort of a low hum of crowd noise, and I think maybe that's the best way of doing it. So I think like a, I don't, yeah. I think I, a I, low hum of, it should be very subtle, uh, just a low hum of crowd noise, I think might be best. I think for college football, I think the noise should be more of songs played by your your band. Yeah, but do you want that going throughout the entire broadcast? No, it would go between. It would go be well, yes, but it would go between snaps and all that. Whether you have drum cadence or just a short, shortened of a fight song or. It'll be it'll Whatever be tolerable to watch an Oklahoma game this year. I'll tell you that much. I mean, one thing I enjoyed like watching the MLS is actually listening and hearing the players talking to each other and what they need to do or what they're looking out for. That's actually really really cool to hear and listen to, and even hearing the coaches yelling out things too. That could be a disadvantage too for football though but yeah you know, there's, there's something you know. uh last question here jared sun card asks us on twitter using, using the hashtag ask sloopcast yeah it's not just for the, the discord following... you guys you can do it on twitter and uh sloopcast at gmail.com i think the following scenarios in likelihood okay, so he gives us four options option one Conference only season in 2020 with 14 playoff. Conference only season in 2020 with 18 playoff. Spring 2021 season and no season. Um, first is the conference only season with a 14 playoff. I want an 18 playoff. That's what I would do as my preference. I just don't see it happening. But I will also put it mm -hmm. as my second most likely with no season being third most likely. And you can just throw out that spring season. It's not going to happen. Mine is conference only with 14 playoff. Second, I have no season. Third, I have conference season with 18 and last, I have spring in 2021. Yeah, and that that's fair. I would say that the one he's missing that I think is actually the most likely, and I don't, or I mean, actually the second most likely. The first most likely conference only season with the 14 playoff. I feel like that's what's going to happen. Yes, but I the agree. second most likely and an option he did not give us is a conference only season with no playoff, no postseason. 
Um, that's on the table, and it's, I think, more likely than an eight-team playoff. Unfortunately. Because one of the big things one of the big things that these conferences are wanting, which we should sometime this week, we're going to hear, hopefully hear back from the SEC and the Big 12 on what they would like to do. They're going to follow suit with the Big 10 and the, and the Pac-12 too. Because one of the things is that the conference – the conferences wanted to manage and be able to maintain how the testings are be, are being done, and they just feel more comfortable doing it with just the universities in their conference. So when you try to go out to playoffs or even just other bowl games, then you're going out of the way of what they feel comfortable about. So I'm kind well, of leaning think- about. Kind of leaning to what you're kind of saying, though, Jared, is that there will be no playoffs. There will be no postseason at all. I think there will be, but I think a a no playoff is more likely than an extended started. Uh, I might have to buy this program or find a new program. I used OBS on our first recorded one, and it just ate too much RAM and destroyed my computer. So I can't I can't use OBS not with this computer anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I would say a four team playoff is is still very likely. I would say that there's a decent chance that they do it at a single location. Uh, that it's just all going to take place in Atlanta or Dallas. So I feel like that's that's pretty likely that they'll just do it at a single location. And I think the whole thing about staying inside the conference has more to do with being flexible in your scheduling than it has to do with, like, being in a comfort zone, per se. It's, it's like, okay, if we need to cancel this game, then we can shuffle things around, and it's a lot easier to shuffle things around if you're a conference, if your teams are only playing each other. Because you you have full authority at that point. By the, the Big Ten is potentially going to release a schedule this week and like it's just it's all one big to be determined or subject to change the schedule will be merely a suggestion because it just doesn't mean a lot in my opinion because it's good i think the whole reason they've done the single or excuse me the the conference only schedule is so they can shuffle it at a moment's notice and i think that is all the questions we have yeah and i think that's a it for today's show uh, we moved, big piece of news, uh, we moved our t-shirt store. We are now at T Public. So if you search T Public and Sloopcast or check out the link down in the doobly-doo, uh, you should be able to, to check that out. Better quality merch. Uh, I wasn't super happy with the quality of the merch over at Teespring and how it sort of held up over time. So we're going to move away partially for that reason. Um, I like the storefront more. It allows me to sort of edit stuff better. It's it's easier to organize. Um, I don't think I'm going to make quite as much money off of it, but that's, that's fine as long as you guys are getting better quality stuff. Oh, you also get it a lot quicker. Like the Teespring stuff took forever to show up, and that was annoying. So... I just decided to move over to T Public just because mostly because I thought it was a better user experience, both for me as a seller and you as a buyer. Um, even like I said, if I'm not making quite as much money, I just feel like the experience is a lot better. That and they have zip up hoodies. Couldn't get the zip up hoodies get- over at Teespring. But you can at T Public. Just moves the logo to the back of the shirt. It's good stuff. I like it. And uh, I think that's follow us on all the social stuff at Sloopcast Kyle. What's your Twitter handle? The crazy one, crazy with a K and one spelled out. And one of our tiers over at the Patreon is uh, you get a free T-shirt. So that's cool. Go check out the patreon.com slash Sloopcast. Uh, help contribute to the show. Join the Discord. Um live participate in the show all of that fun stuff all right kyle anything in kyle's corner um what about your our own columbus crew just re-up my season tickets for next year 
weeks. Yes, in the new stadium. Yeah. There's going to be a beer garden. I think I talked about this last week, but I think it's worth repeating. There's going to be a beer garden in the Nordeke. Hells yeah. It's awesome. Hells Hell yeah. yeah. Also, the crew is sweeping through their group, defeating Cincinnati, the Red Bulls, and Atlanta. And moving on to group play, which they will play Minnesota Tuesday at 8 p.m. They're just looking really good. They have Their defense is solid. They have some really good playmakers, um, some good strikers and forwards. So, yeah, it's, they're looking really good, looking like one of the best teams as of through the group, group phase. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, they. It's not a, it's a good group. The group they were playing in, Atlanta's the defending champions, and eight win teams are just like, oh, we're just going to call them FC or SC. Something very generic. That is that, or or all, you mean like not using a nickname? Nickname or just like just FC, which you see over in Europe do a lot too. It's just like it's like, come on, be original here. Let's. I know Red Bull is a. It's a sponsor, though, but, I mean, come on. You got the crew. Um, crew SC. They're still the crew. <laughs> to me, they're still the crew. <laughs> they added the SC. I hope that gets changed. <laughs> I hope that gets changed. Now that is all. All right. Uh, that brings us to the super end of the show. Is that a thing? I don't know. Uh, Austin asked us that we played. Uh, some cordial sins at the end of the show. So there's another Patreon slash Discord benefit. Pick the ending music. Assuming it's an Ohio artist, I'll do it. So uh, we're going to play some cordial sins at the end of the show. Uh, make sure to check the show notes for the for the song title. And with all of that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is the cordial sins. Unless, of course, you're on YouTube, in which case you don't get music. Sorry, YouTube. Don't blame me. Blame YouTube. And their super duper strict crap. Copyright law is the worst type of law. Just saying. Mm -hmm. No one likes it. The artists don't want it. The music labels don't want it. But they have to do it because copyright law is stupid. Stupid, stupid copyright law. Once again, this episode of the Sloopcast was brought to you by Wolf's Ridge Brewing. Wolf's Ridge Brewing has amazing beer and they also have like the best beer delivery service you can possibly get. Um... Not just Columbus anymore. If you if you're if you live in the Columbus area and that Columbus area extends out quite a far way, like I know it goes out at least as far as Newark. Uh, they have a zip code thing on the website. You can go type your zip code into and see if they deliver to you. But they deliver to the Columbus area Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, but they also deliver to the other major markets in Ohio, including Cincinnati on Sunday, Cleveland on Monday, Dayton on Wednesday, and then Akron, Canton, Finley, and Toledo on Thursdays. And like I said, check out check out WolfsRidgeBrewing.com. They have an amazing selection of beer. They've grown amazingly over just in 2020 with the number of beers that they offer. I think opening the canning facility was a huge deal for them. So they're packaging all sorts of great beers right now. I really like the Gold Standard. I really like the Beckenraw, if that's how you pronounce it. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but it's a smoked lager. It's really good. It kind of tastes like bacon and a bit like a campfire. It tastes like a campfire. Like you might think that doesn't sound good. It sounds good. I promise. All of that, all of that and more can be found at WolfsRidgeBrewing.com. That is WolfsRidgeBrewing.com. This episode of the Sloopcast also brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I'm holding some smoked right here. Camera. Camera smoked. There it goes. 
I'm holding some Brits blend right here. This is an amazing Southwest guy right here. It's um, great in your chili. It's great in your salsa. The camera won't focus on it, but that's okay. But it's called Brits blend. I promise that's what it's called. Uh, it goes, like I said, anything Southwest. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. I love it. And uh, just the coffee and Q. Oh, the Mad Hatter. It's a citrus pepper blend. Um, and by it's red pepper, it's chili pepper. So it's, it's salt. It's chili pepper. There's the focus. It's salt. It's chili pepper. And it's lime. So you get that like chili lime flavor that I know a lot of people like, but it's also salty. I love the, it's, I put it mostly on chicken, especially if you have like, you like do one of those lazy dinners where you have the frozen like breaded chicken things. I stick in the air fryer real quick, put it in the air fryer for about nine minutes, let it get dethawed mostly, flip them over and then just coat those bastards in some Mad Hatter. It works. It works every time. I promise. All of that and more can be found at the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. You can get 10% off your entire order with the promo code SLOOPCAST10. That is SLOOPCAST10 at checkout. The Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, they have your butts covered.